Hello and welcome all. Please allow in the organization to leave. So, hello and welcome all to this EFLA journal webinar. Um, we are delighted to uh, be with you uh, today. Uh, the webinar is about um, providing some guidance on being published in, uh, uh, in academic and professional journals with a particular focus on the EFLA journal. The webinar will last one hour. We have three presenters with us that, that will be sharing the screen. I, um, the audience is muted. Uh, there will be chances for asking questions uh, at the end of the session and feel free to, to write your questions in the chat and um, at the end we will read the chat or uh, you can also uh, speak if you want. So I'm going to share my screen um, to kick this off and then we'll leave the, um, the floor to my fellow uh, IFLA Journal Committee members. So my name is Perla Hinocenti from the University of Strathclyde. I'm a senior lecturer in information science and I am a member of the IFLA Journal uh, Editorial Committee and we'll be moderating this webinar. We have three presenters with us uh, uh, today, Dr. Stephen Wheat, um, an associate uh, professor for the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and IFLA Journal Editor, Professor Samani El Sayed, uh, the head of the Information Science Department at Ewan University in Egypt, and Dr. Mahmoud Kosro Verdi, Ilan Norway University of Applied Sciences in Norway. So we are all members of the IFLA Journal uh, Committee, and we we will be with, uh, with you uh, this afternoon. Uh, this event is live, uh, it's being um, video and audio recorded, and it's also included the chat. Um, the recorded session will be posted on the IFLA Journal uh, Editorial Committee um, website for 30 days um, after the webinar. Your microphone is muted for, for the time being, but if you have questions or comments, feel free to type them in the, uh, in the chat. We are compliant with GDPR, and if you have questions regarding privacy, feel free to contact professional support at ifla.org. You can also see that uh, for accessibility, uh, this webinar has been live captioned. Um, the live captioning is not always um, not always accurate, but bear with us. We will do our best. And so, moving on, this is the menu for today. Uh, we will start with Steve. Uh, that will guide us through why we publish and how to choose a journal. And then we'll focus in particular on the EFLA journal. And then um, Samani will um, focus in particular on the, uh, the editorial and peer review process. And there will be a double act with Mahmoud, um, who is a um, EFLA journal member uh, uh, and also a published author in the EFLA journal. And he will share his experience. Um, within the publishing process. And so uh, there will be some, some back and forth between Samani and Mahmoud and finally some questions. And this is me for now. So I'm just leaving the floor to Steve Witt. And I'm stopping sharing the screen so that Steve can share. Thank you, Perla. Um... And greetings to everybody. Uh, good, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, uh, depending on which time zone you're joining us from. I'm uh, in Illinois, so for me, it, it's good morning. Um, I'm going to share my screen right now, so bear with me for a moment as uh, 
I get that started. And launch my presentation. Uh, so uh, thank you all again for, for joining us uh, today. And, and I hope uh, you find our presentation uh, beneficial uh, as you work towards uh, pursuing uh, publications uh, in academic journals. Uh, today, I'm, I'm going to talk uh, a bit about uh, why publish uh, in an academic journal and how to choose the appropriate journal for your work, uh, and then uh, discuss uh, in a bit more detail uh, IFLA journal specifically um, and our editorial policies and the types of manuscripts that, that we try to solicit uh, from authors. So first, uh, the, the question of, of why journal publishing uh, is important. Um, and for many, it's a requirement of your job, so that makes it important. But, uh, but there, there are much more better reasons uh, for, for publishing and, and contributing your knowledge uh, to the field. Um, and uh, it's good to, 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 to remember that uh, there's lots of uh, research going on, uh, lots of work happening, um, but if you're not able to publish it, um, uh, nobody knows what, what knowledge you can contribute to the field. Um, and as we know from our work in IFLA, um, uh, library information science is a global field. Um, the profession it, it exists all across the world. Uh, and we need to be able to share uh, different perspectives. So, so the local, regional, and national, and, and cultural specific perspectives are, are quite important. Um, and we need to be able to share those uh, with each other so we don't have uh, just a, a uniform profession or, or a profession dominated by uh, a, a few perspectives. Uh, for, protect, for practitioners, um, Academic journal publishing um, uh, is an important way to provide uh, an evidence-based approach uh, for sharing uh, professional knowledge. Um, and uh, many of the uh, people that publish in IFLA journal uh, are practitioners, uh, are librarians, um, uh, and, and not always from academic libraries. Uh, and for us, it's important to be able to work with those authors to ensure that they're also able to contribute to the professional knowledge base. Uh, academics uh, aren't always on the cutting edge in, in terms of what's happening in individual libraries, and so it's important to have that pr practitioner view. Um, and uh, in addition, um, uh, publishing can, can help uh, with your career often. Um, uh, it's evidence of the relevance of your work, um, of your value to the profession, uh, and, and could help with promotions, especially for us who are in academic positions. Uh, and then finally, um, as we all know, uh, we work in, in an academic environment um, that's become kind of a, a global transfer market. Uh, so the reputations of our institutions uh, especially if we're in a university, the rankings of the university uh, is influenced by uh, the types of journals we publish in uh, and, and, and how often uh, we're publishing in those journals. So, so it can be important to our institutions as well. Uh, so once you, you've begun to go down this path of, of publishing uh, within journals, um, it's important to uh, make sure you make a good choice in terms of which journal uh, to publish in. Uh, there are uh, lots and lots of, of academic journals uh, in library and information science. Um, and I would encourage you to, to take a look at, at some of the, the tables uh, of those. Uh, you can find that in Scopus, for example. Um, uh, and uh, get a good view of, of, of the different 
different journals. Um, uh, as you're working on your, your paper uh, or your research, uh, you need to, to be thinking about the types of journals you might be publishing that work in. Um, uh, you need to think about who it is you want to communicate with uh, and what kind of conversations you're joining. Um, uh, an academic journal article is really something that needs to be uh, embedded in wider conversations in the field uh, and linked to those. Uh, so the audience uh, and, and to whom you're communicating is very important. Uh, you also have to think, um, is what I'm researching, is what I'm doing, uh, is it something uh, appropriate to share with an international audience? Um, does it have relevance uh, to global trends um, uh, or ways in which global, global trends are in fact in, impacting local uh, activities? Um, or is it uh, more national uh, or regional? Is, is it only uh, perhaps trying to communicate to a, a regional authority regarding uh, uh, the importance of an institution, for example? Uh, then, of course, you need to consider things like uh, what are the copyright uh, restrictions placed upon uh, the work that you're publishing? Uh, will you be in an open access journal? Um, many institutions we work in uh, require that we publish uh, open access materials now. Uh, so this is an important uh, thing to consider. Uh, and then also, uh, what are the metrics for the journal? Um, and looking at the, the metrics, uh, the acceptance rates uh, for, for papers uh, is an important step uh, because journals with a higher rating uh, that accept fewer papers um, uh, may be difficult to publish in. Um, and uh, it, it may be good to try with one of those journals first, uh, but you'll need to realize that uh, a large percentage of submissions to those journals uh, are not published. Um, so uh, that needs to be a part of your, your decision process. Um, and, if, and if for some reason you, you need to get your publication out quicker, uh, you need to look at the journal, how quickly they're, they're publishing papers, what the, the timeline for submissions is. Uh, so it's important that you look at um, the, the recent issues, oops, did I go back? Yep. Uh, it's important you look at recent issues uh, of the journal to make sure what you're working on fits uh, that journal, um, and then read the guidelines for the authors. Um, one of the things that can cause uh, a paper to get uh, rejected quite quickly is if the author doesn't follow any of the guidelines. Um, so it doesn't look like a paper for that journal. Um, and the first thing that I do as the editor is look at, at that to see, does this fit our general criteria? And if it does not, then, then it will get rejected uh, or I'll ask you to, to adjust things. Uh, so this is a very important step. Uh, so, so look at, at the journal. Uh, and if you have any questions, email the editor. Uh, email me or, or feel free to email members of the editorial committee if there's someone from from your region or your country who's on the editorial committee, email them and, and they'll have good advice for you on, uh, on, on publishing in the journal. Uh, and that goes for any uh, journal that you're working with. So moving on uh, to IFLA journal specifically, um, as Perla noted, I, I'm, I'm the editor uh, of IFLA journal. I've, I've been the editor um, I can't remember how many years now, uh, I think six years. Um, and we publish uh, the journal with SAGE, uh, which means uh, we get a lot of support uh, in terms of copy editing, uh, in, in terms of the technology around the review process. Uh, and then finally, at publication to make sure that the, 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 the work is accessible and available uh, uh, through multiple uh, databases and, and, and other platforms. Uh, we are a peer-reviewed journal um, and uh, we focus on library and information science, should be no surprise. 
Um, but uh, we also like to look at uh, the social, political, economic issues that impact access to information uh, and access to knowledge. Uh, so not only uh, what, uh, what libraries are doing or, or how they're doing their work well, uh, but how they're impacting society, how, you know, how society is impacting access um, and, and how libraries are contributing to and responding to economic issues. Uh, at the same time, uh, we seek to reflect the values of IFLA. Uh, we, we view our profession uh, and its practices as working uh, ultimately at a local level, uh, but informed uh, by multiple overlapping uh, global contexts, uh, whether that be uh, new technologies, uh, economic uh, imperatives, um, uh, UN sustainability goals, um, uh, privacy issues, etc. Uh, these are all informing our local practice and we'd like to engage uh, that local uh, and global aspect of, of our work uh, simultaneously, if that's possible. Uh, so we seek research that navigates between uh, global and local uh, to produce uh, research that informs uh, uh, both our, our knowledge uh, of the, that local context and how it's uh, being impacted, uh, but also how it, it's also contributing to uh, the global knowledge base for, for the field. Uh, so, uh, uh, why would you want to publish with IFLA Journal? Um, I, I think there's a lot of good reasons. Um, uh, uh, one, we have a, a very broad global readership. Uh, each member uh, organization and, and institution in IFLA receives a, a, a subscription to IFLA Journal. Uh, so, it has a very wide readership uh, around the world, not just constrained uh, to, uh, to one specific region or, or language group. Um, uh, to make it more accessible, we, we, we translate the abstracts of each paper uh, into the seven IFLA languages uh, so that it's something that can be uh, shared uh, more broadly. Um, and we have uh, a fairly fast uh, and increasingly quick uh, publishing process. Uh, we've, we've just negotiated with SAGE um, uh, and, and SAGE is, is excited to invest in, in IFLA Journal to, to make sure that we can publish more content. So we've removed uh, page limits to our issues. Um, and that means that we can uh, publish things quicker uh, without it waiting for a year uh, to get into a print issue, which, which has increasingly been the case as submissions have increased uh, and also the quality of content has increased over the last few years. Um, and in addition, uh, the IFLA Journal is uh, what we would call a hybrid open access. Um, so uh, authors can uh, place their uh, accepted manuscript uh, into their, uh, uh, their institutional repository without an embargo. Um, and then your, public, your article will also be published online on SAGE, uh, printed uh, in the journal. Uh, and then once it's printed, uh, published by SAGE, it's available open access on the IFLA website. Uh, so, so there's multiple uh, streams in terms of making your work accessible uh, through the journal. Moving on to the, the submissions, um, uh, we, we accept articles uh, in these four types. Um, and it's important to note um, the, the, what distinguishes uh, these types of, of works uh, and, and why each is important in their own right. Um, uh, for the most part, uh, we receive our, what we would call original research. Um, uh, and I, I've provided some advice here. 
that, that you can read on original articles. Uh, but essentially, uh, we'd like to see that you're uh, associating uh, your work with broader trends in the field, um, that the literature review, for example, uh, is not just focused on uh, one region or country, but, but looking at that phenomena uh, as it works at, at different levels uh, within the field and, and how it's uh, impacted by broader structures. Um, review articles, uh, similarly, uh, were, are, are an opportunity for someone to explore a topic uh, and find gaps uh, in the research, uh, find important trends, uh, and help to inform directions for future research. Uh, increasingly, we receive uh, case studies, uh, and we were happy to, to review those, um, but we, we really want to see case studies um, that are trying to build on our understanding, not just describe an institution or a project uh, or a success story uh, or even a problem, uh, but, but really taking that and using it as a way to build uh, understanding on how uh, a locally experienced phenomena uh, interacts with, with wider global trends in the field. Uh, and then also with essays, uh, we ask people to provide uh, an analysis on trends or controversies. Uh, and that's an, and that's an opportunity to, to delve into policy issues, for example. Uh, and finally, uh, as you're considering uh, papers, uh, the typical article length for if the journal is about three to eight thousand words. Um, and we, we do at times accept manuscripts that are longer, um, but we'll, we'll often ask people to, to edit things down a, a bit. Um, and we, we accept a range of research approaches, so uh, qualitative, quantitative case study, as we mentioned, uh, are things uh, we increasingly see mixed methods. Um, and I'm happy to see that we, we see a lot of uh, multi-institutional collaboration uh, amongst our authors, which I think strength, strengthens work uh, for a journal like IFLA. Um, uh, as, as a journal that represents IFLA, we, we uh, accept a, a, a wide diversity of topics. Um, anything within the field of library and information science uh, is acceptable. We, we publish on prison libraries, academic libraries, um, uh, rural information needs. Um, uh, so anything within uh, the, the broader field or, or under the purview of the IFLA organization is something we uh, seek to publish. Uh, and finally, um, we uh, publish several special issues each year. Uh, so it's good to keep an eye out uh, on those. Right now, uh, we're in the editorial process to finalize a, a special issue on uh, indigenous librarianship. Uh, we also have several special issues right now uh, that, that we're working on, one on COVID-19, um, uh, one on preservation, um, and another on intellectual uh, freedom. Uh, and one thing I'd like to encourage people is to contact us if you have an idea for a special issue. We, we like to work with the IFLA units um, uh, and professional committees uh, on special issues, but even if you're not in one of those and you have an idea, uh, we'd be happy to hear about it. Um, uh, so uh, I'd like to, to thank you all and, and then uh, leave the rest uh, for uh, my colleagues uh, Amani and Mahmoud to to discuss the the, the review uh, and authorship uh, process within the journal. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Steve. Thank you for this. So you you really nicely uh, illustrated the differences between uh, publishing um, the piece of work in a. Um, in another publication, for example, the book, so a book chapter, and then publishing um, the journal um, journal article, and in particular, um, an article with IFLA. 
And so now we have the pleasure of having with us um, Professor Tamani El Sayed uh, with a double act uh, between Tamani and Mahmoud. You are still muted, Samani. Um, you need to unmute yourself. You can do, you can unmute yourself by pressing on the icon with a microphone on the left hand side uh, in your Zoom interface. Uh, oh, there you are. Excellent. Okay, hello, everyone. Thank you, Perla. Thank you, Steve, uh, for encouraging me to be one of uh, part of this webinar. Uh, today, we will discuss uh, peer review re levels, review types, what does the reviewer look for, what should also do, and some notes to remember when, you, when your paper getting rejected from any uh, journal. There are two levels of peer review, uh, BISC peer review, and uh, uh, it's made by the editorial peer review, uh, editorial board. Uh, it happens quickly within two, uh, one or two days or one or four, two weeks. Uh, uh, made by the journal editor, editor in chief, managing the editor. Reviewer peer review, uh, this is the second type. I will talk about reviewer peer review. Uh, uh, Stephen talk about the editorial. Uh, in this part, there's five types of review. Uh, the first one, single blind review, uh, two double blind review, triple blind review. Uh, uh, open review, in this open review, uh, this is a new trend for reviewing. Uh, both reviewer and the author are known. Uh, and maybe there is a review report published with the article. Uh, collaborative review, two or more reviewers work together to submit a unified report. The important uh, thing in this uh, webinar, uh, I wanted to talk about what does the reviewer look for and what should author do? It will be a conversation like a conversation between author and the reviewer. The first issue, the manuscript doesn't fall within the journal's aim and scope. Um, I make the, uh, the 10 reasons. Uh, this is the first one. If the paper will not be interest or value to the journal or the audience of the journal, it's unlikely to be accepted. What should author do? First one, uh, make sure you read journalism aim and scope carefully. Uh, search for similar articles in the topic. Uh, the author may can use one of the journal selector services. Uh, Sage one of them, uh, and most of our uh, publishers uh, make this uh, tool available for free for authors. The author can target your, uh, the paper for a particular journal. Uh, familiarize yourself truly to a potential journal. Uh, what sort of papers uh, do they publish, original articles uh, or briefs uh, or case studies? What is the culture of the journal, national or international focus? Write for this journal. Uh, why target EFLA journal? Uh, uh, Steven said it before, but I wanted to add uh, the last one, the last item, providing a meaningful, helpful review for each submitted manuscript. Uh, the second issue, uh, fail in screening plagiarism. Uh, 
especially I, I to, uh, this point for um, uh, Arab countries or Asian countries, uh, plagiarism uh, culture uh, is, is not high for most uh, authors. So uh, he can, every author, can use a plagiarism checker to ensure originality of his content. Use reference management tool to get reference in a good quality, like Zotero, EndNote, Mendeley is a free one. Be sure of the maximum similarity. Uh, some journals uh, said it's uh, the maximum similarity, 15%. Uh, Other journals uh, require the zero similarity. Uh, issue three, uh, false findings in the research result. Not original research study. The manuscript has low quality and don't present a novel work doesn't make a significant contribution to the progress of science. All the data or no, now irrelevant, it's getting out of date. What should also do? See the results of other published literature in the same topic, present new significant results only. Compare your work with other works in the same study or the same topic. Make sure the validation of your data. Issue four, uh, the manuscript has poor scholarship. We mean by scholarship, uh, it falls to address important literature within the field. The paper might contain observations, but are not a full study. Uh, the manuscript may ignore or overlook other important work in the field. What should author do? Ask a manager or a trusted uh, friend uh, to help you in keep another eye on your man manuscript with his experience. Uh, if you are open for feedback, you can uh, 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 for unpublished uh, papers, you can get a feedback from other scientific community by uploading it to a preprint server, for example. Issue five, uh, the study is too narrow. Uh, the study wasn't big enough or, or high impact, for high impact journals. It seeks, high impact journals seeks to publish a study that are based on a rather, rather large data set supporting your conclusions. Uh, it may be more, it, your manuscript may be too specialized or in depth or superficial. What should the author do? Compare the size of your study to those previously published in the journal. Has your study investigated a similar number of different study parameters? Issue six, research ethics ignored. It's uh, an important one in social science and the humanities. Uh, 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 some people think uh, this one is for uh, medical uh, issues, but uh, uh, some studies in uh, social science and the humanities need this ethics. The study doesn't apply consent form for patients. Different journals may have their own patient consent form. So what the author should do? confirms that informed consent form was obtained from all participants. Uh, patient uh, may sign more than one consent form. If your paper getting rejected from a journal, so you can take more than one consent form for uh, getting published in another journal. Issue seven, English language issues like grammar, punctuation, and spelling errors. Uh, so the author can take time and don't hurry to submit your manuscript. Read your manuscript carefully word by word. Ask others to check your paper before you submit it. The author can also getting help from publisher most publishers offer, uh, offer English language editing service. Uh, 
like Sage. Uh, Sage uh, offering many services like English language editing, translation, manuscript formatting, and other author services. You can uh, catch it with yourself from uh, Sage uh, website. Issue eight doesn't conform to the journal's author guidelines. For this issue, simply go to IFLA journal submission guidelines. Every, every journal have a submission guideline. Read it carefully. Issue nine, fill the technical screening. Uh, we mean by technical screening, it may be by the editor, not the reviewer. The paper is under review at another journal. The manuscript lacks uh, key elements such as title, list of authors, uh, ACT. Uh, discrepancy between the abstract and the remaining manuscript. The abstract is talking about a topic, and the remaining manuscript is another topic or some related topics, not the issue of the, of the abstract. Tables and the figures are not clear enough to read. Manuscript uh, presentation style poorly organized. For author, he can do ensure, ensure all data presented is clear and legible. Adjust your article to meet the guide for the author. Uh, keep your article well structured and organized. Uh, finish your article with a strong conclusion based on your findings. Uh, the author can do also, uh, don't submit to multiple journals at the same time. If you must submit to another journal and you think the editor is delaying too much, you can write to the, uh, to the editor an official message, a message to withdrawal of your manuscript. You can send a pre-submission inquiries to several journals at the same time. Pre-submission uh, pre inquiries, you can use uh, this thing to uh, ask uh, the editor if, uh, of many journals if they interested in uh, your topic or your, or your manuscript subject. The last one, uh, duplicate and the period publication. Also submit a manuscript reporting a work that has already been reported in a large part or in a published article. Uh, in some cases, it, it will not be an article. It, it may be a thesis, uh, master, PhD. So the author should, in the letter of, mass of submission, uh, clearly say so. And the author should provide a copy or copies of the related material to help the editor decide how to handle the submission. For the decision, the reviewer take one of those decisions. First one, accept without any changes. Uh, this is the rare one. Accept with uh, minor revisions. Accept after uh, major revisions. Revise and resubmit. Uh, the final one rejected the paper. Uh, this one is the hard one for the author, for the reviewer, for the editorial also. So what the author can do with the rejection letter? Uh, you have to remember that low quality of the manuscript is not the only reason for rejection. There are many reasons or another reasons. Quality and experience of the peer reviewers volume of submission. Some journals get more submissions in the same topic. Uh, journal is decision-making policy. The journal editor is looking for something specific or, or uh, at a particular time, like a special issue, issues. The journal receives more than one submission on the same topic. Uh, another thing to remember as an author, uh, the journal editor may provide additional information in their response letter or rejection letter. So this information can be very helpful to consider when choosing another journal. Uh, last one, don't get discouraged. When you have a manuscript rejected from your selected journal, 
everyone has received a rejection letter during their research career. Uh, myself, one of them. Uh, Einstein, one of them, get a rejection letter for his uh, article about gravity. So make the necessary adjustments and resubmit the paper to a new journal. Thank you and stay safe. Oh, thank you so much, Amani. Thank you. There was a really very, very useful um, list of uh, uh, potential challenges and, and, and pitfalls that an author may encounter and also really useful suggestions um, and advice for the audience. I still ha um, have not met anybody, any author that hasn't been rejected at least once. So this is common, it happens, don't be discouraged. Um, and as Amani said, usually the, the feedback is very helpful um, and he can help you to, to strengthen your work and to improve it. And now we had uh, Mahmoud um, that is going to share with us his author's view. So hello, Mahmoud. Hi, uh, this is Mahmoud Khosrojerdi, a senior academic librarian and uh, a member of Global Health Research Group in Norway. Uh, I'm working at the Inland Norway University and uh, as a part of this global health project, I'm working on how people in the world search for coronavirus related information. But today uh, I'm going to speak uh, about my experience uh, with publishing in IFLA journal. I would like to speak about my article information, the rationale for selection of IFLA journal my the experience with the review process the comments that i got from the reviewers and if i am satisfied with my selection or not my article was a systematic review of literature and it was focused on trust in online health context i checked that this article was in the border borderline of the scope of the journal, but uh, since the journal was interested to uh, access to information and use of information, I thought that it would be relevant. Then I submitted uh, to the journal and it was published in uh, 2016. I was a PhD student at the Oslo Metropolitan University. And for me, it was very important to get a fast feedback on my manuscript. Uh, I was also very, very curious about uh, uh, the standard that we have in Norway. In Norway, we have a national system for analyzing academic publications of the world. In this system, all publications, including journal art, journals, uh, book series, and so on, are uh, analyzed by a group of national uh, members and uh, they uh, decide a journal to be included in this list or not. The purpose with this system is to, uh, to uh, avoid uh, <laughs> publish in uh, predating journals. In the system, uh, the journals get uh, two levels, level one or two, which is uh, which, uh, both of them, it means accept, acceptable. And then it gives the researchers this possibility to publish or to, lever, to deliver the manuscript to this uh, mentioned journal in this system. In this system, it shows that if a journal is published, it has been published more than 40 years, and I did know from my library and career perspective that it is a central journal. And in addition, I was searching for a journal that uh, it is open access, but uh, I shouldn't pay article processing charge because I didn't want to use my, uh, I, I had a limited grant uh, in my PhD project. And then my ambition was to publish it open access. If the journal was in the journal level open access and it was fine for me, but in the article level, it needs it, it, it requires subscription. Uh, 
the report, the review report that I got from the reviewers, it was uh, it was amazing. Uh, at the same time, it was my first article I think that I extracted from my PhD project. It was uh, some uh, minor revisions, especially it was very cultural. In some cultures, we explain uh, maybe very very. It's not so ideal explanation. Uh, we think uh, very good, but when we want to write, maybe we we are very economic and we don't explain all aspects, especially on the method and. Uh, which is very important uh, to replicate this study for future researchers. When in the methodology, I think that, uh, and my advice for you as a researcher or as authors is to be to explain all aspects of uh, data gathering or inclusion exclusion criteria and so on in the method uh, section, the ethical perspective, and so on. In addition, it was very fast feedback. I think it took about one month to uh, uh, to get the first decision on the manuscripts, and the report was very, very academic, informative for me. That uh, and it was very fair. Uh, if I want to submit another manuscript to this journal, do I this or not? Uh, when I look at the uh, visibility of the journal, and for example, to the citations of my article based on Google Scholar data, it shows that the citations comes from a broad range of disciplines, for example, from engineering, library and science information, health sciences and information technology, uh, because of the nature of the supplier nature of my article, the citations or, uh, are also interdisciplinary. I certainly recommend the flow journal to, to, for your uh, manuscripts. Uh, since I have a dual role here, we try to uh, have very, very fast feedback on the manuscripts between the authors that they have uh time periods, they want to publish articles they want to defend their dissertations and so on and we consider all of this and we try our best thank you for listening to this presentation and we are here to answer any possible questions uh, on any aspects of uh, delivery or peer review process oh thank you mamoud that was very helpful too. I so I wish to thank all the speakers, um, Steve, Samani, and Mahmoud for for sharing their um, their advice, their insights. So I hope um, the audience uh, understood that uh, publishing an article in a journal requires some thought, um, well, some thinking, some effort. Um, but can also be very satisfying. We, we publish because uh, we want to share um, so our research and our experience with a wider community or communities. Um, we want to contribute to an existing bodies of knowledge. Um, we want to contribute to the success of our institution and also to, to advance um, our career. So at, at this point, we have time for, for questions from the audience. We're looking forward to, to hearing from you. So feel free to chat, um, to, uh, to, to write in the chat or to um, unmute yourself. This is an opportunity to ask us live questions or comments. I know that there can always be a bit of um, um, shyness in, uh, in putting yourself out there, but free um, to ask us um, some questions. We are, a, uh, we are a friendly committee, so we care. <laughs>
Hi, good morning, everybody. This is Indra Simon from Trinidad and Tobago. I'm not sure if you're all hearing me. Yes, Indra, we can hear you well, loud and clear. Thank you. Okay, because what happens, it's heavily pouring in Trinidad in my area right now, so I'm having a lot of trouble with the audio. Um, my question is, uh, well, this is my first experience at attending um, an IFLA webinar. So it was really enlightening for me. And I have always been one, um, I'm a librarian by profession um, at a secondary school. What I wanted to know is, um, this is good information for me because I love to write and I love to do research. And, and it's something I was interested in for a really long time. So I, I really love the opportunity to learn about publishing. Um, so what I wanted to know is, um, since this is new to me, if, um, if I want to write about a particular topic and I have to um, submit that manuscript, do I have to submit it as, as within my profession or, or can I submit um, as, as a personal um, article? Um, I, I'd like to clarify your question. So, uh, you're asking whether or not um, you need approval from your institution, or uh, or whether the you can write on a, a topic within the field but that's not necessarily related to your own. Uh, um, yeah. W well, to clarify, what I wanted to know: um, Do I, uh, as is Ifla, do I write? If I write something, do I? have to get approval from my institution that I'm employed with. Um, and from the perspective of the journal, um, no, uh, we would not require uh, approval from your institution. Um, but uh, it depends on the type of research also. So you may have to check with your institution um, regarding uh, their regulations on publishing, um, especially, uh, for example, you said you work in a secondary school. Uh, there may be regulations within Trinidad um, or, or other bodies that would um, determine how you can discuss students, for example, ensuring student privacy. Um, uh, so any research done in a, in a school context needs to follow uh, the ethical guidelines that, that your institution has. Um, uh, and you may have to address that depending on the type of research you're doing, but we wouldn't require any approval from your institution. Okay, thank you. That, that helps clarify stuff, things for me. Mm -hmm. There is a question in the chat from, um, from one of our um, ILS master's students at the University of Strathclyde. Uh, Nuf is asking, uh, what is the most important factor for the acceptance of the research in the journal? And um, it was um, both Steve and also um, Samani, uh, discuss quite in, um, yes. in detail the, you know, the different factors that are important uh, for, for being uh, so for being accepted in most journals uh, in particular in the ifla journal uh, you need to um, submit a proposal that is um, it's aligned with the journal aim um, and scope so an international, so an international um, topic, and then there are several other um, aspects to be considered, both uh, in terms of content and in terms of formal um, yeah, formal aspects. But we, uh, we will make available uh, the webinar recording and a slide set for for the audience, so that you can um, read again. No, view again uh, these materials uh, uh, at your own time 
and use them also as a checklist. And then as um, Steve mentioned, and also Amani mentioned, feel free to contact uh, the editorial committee if you have some idea to check whether the topic and the, you know, the format uh, may be of interest. I don't know if you want to add something something else. Excuse me, Perla, can I add something? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, for this question, you can take the 10 issues presented during this webinar uh, into consideration before the submission, during the writing. Uh, when you think about the topic, if you think uh, this topic is uh, will be suitable for IFRA journal or another journal in library and information science, take a tour about uh, into the journal, see his aim, topic, everything, the 10 issues, you have to take care or take it into consideration when deciding to publish in a particular journal. Yeah, I, I, I can add to that also, uh, just based on my experience and when, when reviewers um, choose to, you know, suggest that we reject an article, um, I think it's there are two factors that are most often um, the the ones that that lead to a rejection. Uh, the first is um, whether or not that article is contributing new knowledge um, to the field. Um, if it's uh, research that's um, been done quite a lot, um, and and this isn't and and this paper hasn't um, added a new context or new perspective um, or a, a new element to that, then it will often be rejected. So you need to make sure you're contributing something new um, uh, to to the topic. Uh, this the second one seems to be research methods um, uh, as they uh, are associated with the question that the author is trying to ask. Uh, so you must have a, a relevant research question or problem you're trying to solve or address. Um, yes. And once you have that, you, you need to consider how, how do you answer that question appropriately through research. Uh, very often, people will default to a survey, for example, um, but maybe they're using a very small set, uh, as Amani mentioned, uh, in terms of people that they're surveying. Um, and, and in that case, there's no reason to do a survey. You, you could do a, a qualitative uh, research that might be interview-based, for example. Um, so very often, the, the methods that someone chooses don't match the, the question that's being asked uh, or even the conclusions that they're trying to draw. So it's important that the methodology is sound um, and that the author can justify why they use that method um, for that particular question. Uh, and that's usually done uh, by pointing to other research in the literature review that, that uh, uses similar methods or, or similar types of uh, studies uh, that that you're following. There is one more um, question in the, uh, in the chat from Irene Kibandi um, regarding a study that was done in their academic library. Um, so he looks like uh, this could be a local um, well, a study of local interest, but um, the question is whether there is um, any harm in sending it over to IFLA, to the IFLA journal first. Um, I have seen no harm in it. I, I think it's important to uh, ensure that you're covering the context. So if this is a, a study that's uh, you know within a sub country or, or a national type unit of analysis, um, you need to uh, link that uh, study to other uh, 
countries or, or other contexts to show how this particular context is relevant to, a, to an international audience, uh, how that problem maybe has been studied in other places but hasn't been studied uh, uh, in your country or, or in that region. Uh, so you're providing a, a new perspective to it. Um, so it's very important that you justify uh, how this, you know, more localized context relates to the, the more global or, or international. Um, that can be done in the introduction. Um, it can be done well uh, through the literature review by, by showing how this has been studied in other countries, but for whatever reason, not in yours, um, and, and how it's important to understand uh, that other context. Um, so it, it's really uh, up to the author to, to make the case that this is linked to a broader conversation uh, and has, you know, uh, has overriding influences that are going both ways from local to global, global to the local that, that connect your work to other work uh, around the world. Oh, thank you. So any more questions from, from the audience? Uh, Perla, I think we have another question here that uh, the author's right to, uh, uh, to answer or to defend the comments of reviewers. We should reply to this. Do the authors have this right? As, uh, uh, yeah, please could Steve or Amani tell us to what extent could the editorial accept the author defense for, to reviewers' comments? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> a hard question. Um, from my perspective, I, the, the, when I receive a, a manuscript that's, a re, that's been revised, um, the first thing I do is look at the author's comments back um, before I even look at the manuscript to, just to see what, what they've said. Uh, and it's critically important that the author addresses each comment um, and says what they did uh, or what they didn't do. Um, and if they don't agree with the reviewer, they need to say why they don't agree um, and assert their position. Um, very often though, it, if the reviewer has that kind of comment, it probably means you didn't clearly um, describe uh, what you're doing. Um, and so you may need to go back and edit those sections to make it more clear. Um, and you might note that to the, to the reviewers. But um, at least for IFLA Journal, the, the same reviewers that saw the first, paper, the first version of the paper will see the second version. So they're going to be looking for a response. Um, and it, it is a conversation. So you have every right to, to disagree. Um, but if you disagree without justifying it uh, and making your case, then uh, the, the reviewer may not accept your position. Okay, Dr. Steve, I think he is asking about the rejection, if you reject it. If the manuscript is rejected, can the author go back to the editor and defend for his manuscript? Um, yes, um, that happens uh, periodically. Um, and a, re a rejection is a final decision um, for that manuscript. Um, but if the author wants to, to contact me about it, that, that's, that's fine. Um, and I'm happy to discuss it further. Um, the author is also, you know, you know, should take the, the criticism that they've received and, and try to improve the manuscript. The, the rejection is part of the process. Uh, as, as Perla mentioned, every scholar is rejected. Um, and, and that's an opportunity to improve your work. Um, 
my suggestion is usually to, to try and take that and improve the, the manuscript and submit it to a different journal. Um, if you really want to publish an, an IFLA journal for, for a particular reason, um, you would really you would need to significantly change your manuscript and also note when you submit it that this has been submitted previously and rejected so that so that we're aware of it. Um, but typically people will take that advice, improve their manuscript, uh, and then submit to a, to another journal uh, of similar scope and quality uh, to IFLA journal. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So any last final question for, from the audience? We covered quite a lot of ground. And I'm sure this session is going to be useful for uh, prospective authors. So we are really hoping that following uh, this webinar, you will consider submitting to, to the IFLA journal. And we're looking forward to, to receiving um, your proposals. So any last questions, comments? No? Okay, then thank you very much to all the speakers, to all the audience. We are looking forward to hearing back from you and take care for now. Yes. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.